Please welcome to the stage Jean Sebastien Decaux, Amy Dickman, David Droga, and Bonge in conversation with Boaz Paldi. Ooh. So we've made it. We've, uh, we're in our final conversation on stage today. Uh, we, we've been such a great audience all this time. Uh, thank you for staying um, and thank you for, for being here for us now. Uh, it's a hard act to follow, Cristiano Figueres, but we are here to offer a possible solution to, to some of the issues that we are, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're facing. We're, we're here to talk about the Lion's Share. It's a new conservation fund that we, uh, we started about a year ago. Um, it, the idea behind it is very, very simple. Uh, animals have been in human advertisement for 150 years, and at the same time, we're, say, we're, we're facing a very, very severe crisis in nature. Um, so what we're doing is asking advertisers to donate 0.5% of their media spend for each ad that includes an image of an animal. Those funds will be taken together and then be used to really address the biodiversity crisis around the world, to, to work on, bio, on, on conservation, and to really kind of have impact where we need it most. So I'm gonna start by going to Amy. Amy Dickman works uh, as a conservationist in Africa with lions, and I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna try and ask her to connect what we just heard from uh, Christiana Figueres and Katie Couric to biodiversity. Yeah, well, as we've heard all day, the climate crisis is a huge issue and it's a particular driver of biodiversity decline. And we are in a massive crisis for wildlife conservation. We know that probably around a quarter of the species on the planet are threatened with extinction. And while climate change is a really important driver of that, it's also important to recognise that the two biggest drivers are actually land use change and overutilisation. So while Greta Thunberg rightfully talks about us burning our house down, we are also chopping our house into tiny little pieces and eating it. We are destroying the very foundation on which our economy, our lives are built. We have to change this. We have to have transformative change. And to deliver that, we have to have much more political will, much more international funding for conservation, and all the public pressure that will actually deliver that. So if we want to have a better future, we're going to have to have large, resilient landscapes where people and wildlife can coexist to the benefit, ideally, of both. And that will involve both more protected areas in concert with local people, not exclusively. And I think every country here should sign up to the pledge to protect 30% of the world's, world's surface by 2030. But in addition, we need to have people at the centre of this. We need to make sure that local people see the benefits of living alongside wildlife. And the problem at the moment is a fundamental imbalance. Species like lions have immense global value but that value is not translated down to the local level, so there's no reason for people to conserve them. So what we need to do is find innovative new mechanisms to translate that international value effectively down to the local level and incentivize long-term conservation of lions, of other species, and the habitats. And if we do that, we can have resilient ecosystems that will address the issues with climate change and biodiversity loss, and we can help deliver the sustainable development goals. So it really is a win-win, but we need a big change. And hopefully the Lion Share Fund will be a part of that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask David. David Droga is, uh, is, the, co -found, is the founder of uh, Droga5 um, and uh, is really at the heart of the creative uh, industry. Um, uh, why, and, and, and the Lion Share was born out of the creative industry. Why is it important for the creative industry to, to get involved and, and, and take action? Well, the creative industry, by and large, is a very empathetic group of people, and they're also a very audacious group of people. And I think if you take creative people, particularly in marketing and advertising, which feels like a, a not a very empathetic industry, but they are very much stealth being able to get into some of the boardrooms of some of the biggest brands and corporations in the world. And I think what the Lion Shares represents, and also we just heard in the previous panel, yes, if governments are moving too slowly, it is going to take grassroots, but it's also going to take corporations, like because corporations are voted on daily. And the lion share is just a, a, a beautiful, simple idea, which is for years, and again, it wasn't my idea, so kudos to the people who came up with that idea. It's just the first of many, it's just a very simple idea. For years, biggest corporations in the world have used all the elements of the world to try and sell you stuff and make you desire stuff without being accountable to what they're doing. And it's just, if they're going to, they should pay a toll. If they're going to use any type of wildlife and any of their branding and marketing, they should pay a tax for that. Or, or they should pay a percentage of that should go back to actually the earth and, and the animals. And I feel like that's what's key. There has to be some equilibrium between those that take and those that give. And 
brands are the, are, are the one thing that I think have more weight and spend more money and they can actually make a huge difference. And I love the fact now that uh, they're held accountable daily by people. Every time you spend something, you're making uh, a decision. And when brands know that the general public cares about the footprints or lack of footprints that they put out in the world, that's going to affect where they spend their money and where they divert their attention. And the lion's, the, you know, the lion's share is just a beautiful idea. And it's, it's one of those great ideas where it's just so obvious, of course it should happen. And it's almost annoying that it hasn't happened. I, I agree with that, definitely. We have a, we have a, a, a partner of the lion's share here, Jean-Sébastien Decaux. He's a, he's a CEO of uh, JC Decaux, one of the largest advertise, outdoor advertising companies in the world. Um, you joined the lion's share. Um, why did you join the lion's share? As uh, David pointed out, I think it's obvious. It's obvious that when you have an industry, a global industry, spending more than $500 billion around the world in uh, advertising their messages, and because of the shift that those brands, those advertisers are having and the meaning that they need to develop with their customers, knowing that uh, basically they need as well uh, as a corporate, they are massive contributors to uh, doing this shift and to bring more investment into that shift. And uh, as a company, uh, we were founded 54 years ago by my father. And the idea was to take money from advertisers and to put them into public service, such as the bus shelter, and he created the first advertising bus shelter, free of charge for local community, in exchange of the advertising right. And what we are saying here is, is, is similar, is how we can better drive money coming from corporates that are brands that want to create more means or being more meaningful for their customers and to better drive their investment, uh, their huge investment on a yearly basis into some uh, more important uh, topics such as this one. And, and the other um, uh, topic I would add as well is the fact that uh, if you are today born in Lagos, 20 million uh, population, if you are born today in Tokyo or in Guangzhou in China, 15 plus million uh, population, how can you be connected to nature? So I think those brands using as well uh, animals, images, wildlife images, uh, have to put as well uh, those images and those brands, not only to sell a product, but to convey the wildlife and what nature is about, as well in the cities for population to keep the connection with the nature. Because otherwise, as urbanization grows up, uh, you will always be pushed back and always further from, from, the, from what this is all about, for the, from the wildlife. Thank you so much. Uh, we have with us the amazing Bond from South Africa. If you stay till the end of the, of the panel, she will, uh, she will be singing two, two beautiful songs that we heard yesterday in Soundcheck. They are amazing. Um, but first, I'd like to ask Bond, why did you get involved with the Lion Share? So, I mean, it's funny. I've been a, on a personal journey, um, basically trying to figure out what matters to me, um, looking at my community, looking at my partner, and in extent, um, my legacy, basically, what I'm leaving behind. And that made me actually think about the planet and what the part that I'm playing and the impact that I am, um, you know, have basically um, on the planet. And I believe that, um, yeah, I believe that the power, you know, the power of one basically um, can help uh, bring collective change basically. And, um, and I believe as an artist, um, we are, we should be held uh, accountable also as well. Because um, I mean, we've got music videos as well out there with animals on them, um, in them as well. So I feel like we, yeah, we do need to actually be held responsible um, and yeah, take action. And I also believe um, in the words of Nina Simone, I loved what she said, when she described what uh, what art should be and it should reflect the times and yeah I feel like we should really be thinking very hard about our platforms as artists um, and and yeah and taking it seriously I believe um, and making sure that we're using it to bring more awareness um, and yeah and take action I think one of the uh, added values of, of the lion's share is that we can reach consumers. The fact that we, we will be, uh, we, we work with large brands and we work with the creative community gives us that, that perfect storm of, of reaching a mass audience. So what we, are, what we want to do with the lion's share is also create a, a, a movement for conservation, for biodiversity, for the planet. Um, do you think that's going to that's, that's, that's work, uh, David? For the, for the Lion Show, I definitely think it's work, and I, th I think it's setting a precedent. As, as a, to reiterate what, I, reiterate what I said before, I feel like it, it was celebrated very much at the, the biggest media marketing festival in the world, which was in France at Cannes. 
And, and what it did is it put a, a spotlight on what are we doing as an industry, a collective industry, more so than just creating beautiful things or desirable things. What are brands doing to actually show that they are also citizens? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> These corporations, they can't exist separate to the day-to-day -day of everything. And you know, you, there are such great examples now of big brands you know, like the Unilevers of the world. And you know, when, 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 a, when a car brand makes a decision to go the right way with its, you know, the way it's manufactured, or you know, I feel like those, those are seismic. And I feel like the, the, the lion's share is one of those things where it gets to touch everybody. As I said, it's a surface level thing where it's just obvious. But more and more our industry is being held accountable because they, as I said, it all comes down to half the brands are doing it because it's the right thing to do, half the brands are doing it because they think it's what their consumers want. You know, I don't care whether they're doing it sincerely or, or insincerely, as long as it's happening. You know what I mean? That's the main thing. And as I said, it, it all comes down to the collective power of all of us. So that's, it's, it's up to us to sort of hold them accountable with what we spend our money on. That's, a, that's exactly right. I, I'm going to come back to you, Jean Sebastian. This, this, uh, this global movement that the lion's share in, intends to build, do you, how, what, what's your views on that? Do you think that the, the consumers have the power to change? I think we need to give the consumers the power to change. Uh, I think media, even though the lion's share was not thought initially for media, but for, for brands, for advertisers, I think media has a huge responsibility for us to engage the customers, to engage the citizens and to make, basically have them on board in order them to push the brands to change, to evolve. It's like us with the politics, no? I mean, at the end, we've got the politics that we, that we deserve. So I think we've got the brands that we deserve, point one, I would say. Um, um, and, and point two, um, um, uh, in, in the public space where we operate today, we can put any brand we want. Uh, we are in public space. We don't own the space. It's, like a, it's not like on television or on social media. And although we are dependent from a public authority, today we can advertise any brand we want as long as they pay the highest price. It's not right. But that's the name of the game. So we can't be out of the picture. So basically, when we win a tender, such as here in New York for the, for the bus shelters, then we sell to big brands. No matter how they are committed to some programs, no matter their impact, no matter the changes that they're bringing to their products, and no, no matter uh, how well they are, uh, they are doing their shift and, and their uh, contribution to, to, to the global issues. And you have small brands that are contributing to those changes, that are changing, but that can't advertise because they can't afford it. So that's as well uh, an issue uh, that, uh, that we need to tackle. But, uh, but so back on your question, uh, Boaz, uh, media needs to engage the citizens, the customers, in order for them after to put more pressure on the brands, on the corporation, to contribute to the lion's share, and as well to uh, change their messages and the content of their, uh, of their product. So that's, uh, that's our responsibility, I think, as, as, as media. And, and Amy, um, you, you talked about bringing it back to the communities. Um, how, how important is that? And how, is, that, is that also part of, the, of this conversation with the consumers that we can have? Absolutely. I think this engagement with the media, this ability to amplify the message is huge. I mean, we live in tents, in the bush. Our ability to get the message of, say, lion decline out there is extremely limited. And yet when we talk to people and we say, look, lions have disappeared from 95% of their range. There are now fewer wild lions left in Africa than rhinos. There are 14 times fewer than elephants. These are messages that are hugely important because it's such an iconic species to people. But we are not able to get them out. And most importantly, we're not able to mobilize the action we need to address those declines and to use that conservation to empower local communities. So through things like this, through partnerships with advertising, with media, we can not only generate the funds to come in, but we can really galvanize very effective action on the ground. And I think we have seen from our work how much, if you take those sort of international value and you bring it down and you provide people with tangible benefits on the ground from wildlife presence, they want to be ambassadors, they want to have this wildlife there and they will be securing it. So I think it's a huge potential and one that I really hope we can make the most of. So the lion's share, uh, the research behind it is that um, uh, 
animals appear in about 20% of all global advertisement. That equals to about $118 billion per year. And that, if you take, if you extract 0.5% of it, which is what we're asking for brands to donate to the lion's share when they use an animal in their images, is a, still a huge amount of, 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 of money. Um, if, we, if the lion's share signed on the top 20 advertisers of the world, that includes Unilever, P&G, Toyota, Etc. We have one of them, Mar Mars Incorporated, who's our who's our pioneer and joined us. Is one is is on that list. But if all 20 of them joined, we would already have 40 million dollars a year to spend on on conservation, on 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 true impact for biodiversity. So if we had every advertiser in the world, we would have a significant amount of funds to be able to channel to these causes. But but I'm going back to you, Amy. How much are those funds needed? Well, they're critically needed and we need to scale up massively in terms of what we invest in conservation. Just using sort of protected areas where lions exist in Africa, we think conservatively it's probably around a billion dollars a year that is needed. Now, that sounds impossible for somebody running a very small conservation project. But when you look that, for instance, in the UK, people spend two and a half billion pounds a year on plastic bottled water, which we don't need. You know, the money is out there, but we need the consumers to make the right choices and to be able to unlock some of that money internationally. And when we can see things like the Lion King, you know, how much money that makes. People are truly invested in these species. And the latest remake made, I think, a billion dollars in the first two weeks. So we see this huge mismatch between what we need on the ground to sustain wildlife in a way that benefits people and what's being spent internationally. I think this is a great mechanism for joining those two up and making sure that the consumers feel empowered to make those choices to deliver conservation success and uplift communities. And, and so that, that's, a, that's a really, really important point. We only, we only have a, a few minutes left. Uh, we have a, still a very exciting performance by Bonge to, to come up there, uh, that, that, we'll, that we'll tell you a little bit about in, in a minute. And we also have another very, very uh, exciting announcement that, that, that will be coming up. Um, but just before we go, I'm going to ask each of you to say uh, a few words about what we, we want to empower the people sitting in this room, the people out there, to take action. What, what can they do? What, what's, what's, uh, what, what can consumers do to take action? Jean Sebastian. <laughs> Thank you for asking me to start. <laughs> <laughs> you looked no, ready. Uh, I, uh, well, I think some people before before us and before uh, before me did it very very well, and uh, I will not uh, put as much emphasis as it has been done before. So, uh, I would just add um, that we need to create global movement. Uh, we are seeing global movement being created. Uh, yeah, maybe since the last uh, two or three years, this is very positive. I think that UNDP teaming with cooperation is great. To have a full industry uh, potentially to commit to a UNDP program, uh, for UNDP to, to collaborate with corporations and for corporations to collaborate as well with this unique global governance, I think it's extremely positive to give you the power and to give you basically the, uh, the, the clues to, uh, and the leads uh, then to, uh, uh, to move uh, to, take you, to take your part as well. But we need to take ours as corporations first and industry. Fantastic. Amy? I agree. I think the things that the previous speaker said were so powerful that we're not going to rehash them, but you know, this idea that everyone has the power to make a change and that if we put seven billion people together, we can make the transformation that is needed. And so those pressures that people put on corporations, on companies to ask them the questions, are you committing? Why aren't you spending this sort of stuff? Companies listen to that. I think it's very important that all of us and all of our choices make the most responsible ones we can for the entire world so that we are benefiting those people who don't have a voice and the species who don't have a voice to, to have a better future for both of them. Great. I mean, I think every single day, every person at all stages makes decisions about where they spend their time and their money. And every one of those is a vote. And I feel like if you spend your hard-earned hard money with things that are aligned with you and where you think uh, the world should be going and, and, and making the right decisions, brands will respond to that. Corporations will respond to that. They are... Every day they have meetings about what people think about what they're doing. Every day they scrutinize what their competitors are doing. And if they feel that there's a groundswell from one transaction at a time, to your point about the Lion King, if it became from a, a nice to have that they're doing this to why aren't they doing it, there will be a tipping point where things will move drastically in the right direction. Uh, well, yeah, um, just to echo what everybody's been saying is that 
um, yeah, the power, I believe that, um, yeah, you've got the power and you've got a voice and um, consumers should feel empowered to be questioning their, um, their local uh, governments, basically, um, to be able to find out why certain um, policies are not even put into place regarding, obviously, um, with maybe greens, recycling, um, things like that. But I feel like, yeah, consumers should feel empowered and know that they've got a voice and they are an important voice in this whole conversation. Um, like, again, like I say again, it's the power of one to, yeah, to bring the collect collective change. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for, uh, for joining us again for the 10th anniversary of the Social Good Summit. It's been an amazing day. We've heard from so many speakers. Before we go, uh, before we, go uh, we have one announcer that actually talks exactly to that from, from uh, Joseph Huffhannon from Avaz. He's going to tell us some very, very exciting news about the lion's share. And, and, um, and one of the songs that, um, that Bond is going to sing was, um, was uh, given to the lion's share by Diane Warren, one of the most successful songwriters of all time, um, a really incredible songwriter uh, that, that has won multiple uh, awards, multiple and written songs for everyone in the world. Um, and she's donated one of her songs to us. And we have a, a very short clip to show from her. And then we'll hear from Joseph Hafhanan from Avaz. And then Bond will be, will be performing. Thank you very much, everyone.